Hey everyone, welcome back to Art a la carte and in this episode I'm going to show you how to draw a dog paw. It's kind of funny, I had actually quite a few requests for this. I have one video that I drew of a wolf and I have it in the snow so you can't see its feet and I think that's where it got started. And so a lot of people have been asking, how do you draw this feet? So let me show you. This can work with just about any dog. Um, you just might buff it up if it's a bigger dog or scrawny it down if it's, if it's you know, a tiny dog. So to be able to draw a dog paw, you first kind of have to completely understand how the dog body works. So I'm going to just give a rough sketch of the dog body and then come back and we'll talk about the dog paw. Here we have the basic um, dog, kind of a uh, more of a wolf breed um, mixed dog. Um, but how do we get the paws in here? So first we have to kind of take an x-ray photo of what's going on inside the dog. So first, right, right here is the backbone. If you draw down along here is your backbone. And off this backbone is what is known as the shoulder blade. So there's the shoulder blade here. And from the shoulder blade comes the actual leg. So it kind of comes off right back here and comes down. There's this technical little bone right there. So it kind of goes and it has a joint here and comes down. And that's kind of what if you would look at a human, if a human was standing like a dog, um, this would be this would be the shoulder, this would be the upper arm, and this would be what what would be our elbow right here. Then they have this really long bone from this joint. So so here from this point, it, from here the, the dog leg can pivot in all different directions. Down from this bone, now the dog leg can pivot in all different directions. And so then this leg comes down to here to another pivot. And this would be what would be our wrist. So upper arm, elbow, wrist for us, if you, if you kind of see how your arms and stuff would move. Then there would be what would be your palm of your hand, which is right here. And this is where we start getting technical. So this is the palm of your hand. And then there is the fingers, which are the toes of the paw, and they kind of come out here. So this is all what's going on underneath the fur. Then, of course, you know, there's muscles and tendons and things like that. And there's a little bit more muscle up towards the top of the leg, and as it kind of comes down towards the end of the, of the paw, it gets a little bit thinner. Just like in your arm, there's a little bit more muscle right up at the, in your forearm than down at your wrist. And so then the... The skin just kind of covers along along that. So as you draw your leg, you don't want to keep it the same thickness here as down here. You want to taper it off just slightly. I mean, you don't want to have it, you know, come cone feet or something. Come down here, down to the paw here, and then you have your toes of your paw. Let's put the other leg really quickly back here. So I'm going to see my shoulder blade, my forearm, back to my elbow, and I'm going to come down here to my wrist area, palm of my hand. And these are not technical terms. These are just what I use in my head. And then the fingers or toes. Thicken that out just a little bit. But you'll just see it kind of has just, um, it doesn't just come straight and go into a pot. It has this little kind of arch. And this is too should be a shock absorber so when the wolf is running and jumping this takes in that that absorbing shock it's kind of like the arch in your foot kind of takes your shock away when you're running and jumping and stuff like that that's what it does for the wolves all right so let's look at the back feet now all right so what's going on back here is we have we have the hip bones coming down here this is the hip and so so then the leg joints in here and then we have upper part of the leg coming down here so this can all move here because it's a joint comes down here to what would be considered the knee but our knees would bend this way where their knees bend the opposite way so here's a joint and then it comes down to the back of the leg just a little bit not too far and then it goes into what we would consider the ankle and then into the foot, into the toes. So a joint, 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 and this one pivots and allows the paw to bend back this way. Like that, that's where that one pivots. So in this, we would have a lot of really good muscle right up here. And as it gets to this 
back of the leg here, what I would consider the knee, then it tones down a little bit. So you have a really good joint there, tones down, and then comes back. Okay, so let's do this back leg here. Let's have it come here, back leg, um, knee, calf, ankle, foot, toes right in there. See, it's really important when you're drawing animals or people that you're understanding what's going on on the inside. Because once you can get down what's going on, how things move on the inside, then you can correctly interpret it in your art. And you're not going to have those weird legs that are bending in a weird position and you think, what's wrong? Well, it's because the leg doesn't bend back that way, it bends this way. So studying the anatomy and um, how the muscles and bones work, it's really going to help you create a better and more realistic looking drawing. So now I have a creepy looking <laughs> drawing <laughs> as we use our x-ray vision and it fades up into the body. It's, it's kind of a cool looking picture and creepy in another way, but hey, very cool. So let's take a really quick look at just the actual paw pads themselves and just kind of look and see how those are built. Okay, so let's first look at the front view of the paw. So here it comes down the foreleg to what would be the wrist, going into the palm of the hand, and then your toes. And you'll see four toes come out towards you, like your four fingers. And then what would be our thumb is what they call their dew claw, which is right up here. Okay, and then they have um, their little claws that come out. And they're set a little bit lower. Sometimes we tend to draw them up a little bit higher on their foot, but they're actually set pretty low on the toes. And unlike cats, they're not retractable. Uh, cats can kind of retract their claws back in. I don't really think that dogs can do that. I don't think they have retractable claws. And to get that illusion that the toes and the foot is coming out towards you, it's just going to take a little bit of practice. Um, just drawing it out, getting your shape and your shading right to kind of push things forward a little bit. Um, great way to do that is just check out some reference photos. Look at real dogs. You don't have to go and find a wolf, but you can look at a dog. Let's do a little bit of a side view of this. Just a little bit coming down. The wrist. Palm of the hand. And then going into the paw pad of the dog. So it's kind of coming out. So you're just going to have this really nice arch down just a little bit. When you're drawing, you don't have to draw every single toe because they kind of squish together. Sometimes you don't see them like this last toe would be kind of squished in there. And then just right underneath, kind of right where the wrist is where that, that last fifth toe is. So there we go. So this would be kind of like a normal dog, not a super big dog or a wolf. Um, wolves tend to have a really larger foot, but more like a regular dog, like a, like a lab or a golden retriever or those kind of dogs would be kind of this size. If you wanted to do a smaller dog, uh, you can just really just skinny out those little legs. So you're just like drawing it, but in a miniature scrawny version. <laughs> I have a little scrawny dog, but he's fluffy, so. It's hard to see his legs sometimes. <laughs> so there we go. Big dog, little dog, but pretty much the same build up, just working on um, muscle mass and stuff like that would just kind of determine the factor there. 
I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. I know I had gotten lots of requests on how to draw dog feet, wolf paws, all those kind of things. So hopefully this answered a lot of questions that you have. If you have any other questions um, about different parts of, of the wolf or any animal, leave those in the comment box below. And I love, I love getting suggestions from you. Really, you guys are the ones who kind of tell me where to go with these tutorials. So I really um, listen to every one of your guys' requests. My battery is about ready to die in my camera, so I'm going to let you go. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.